Hi guys, so today what I want to do in this quick video is to I'll teach you how to do uh, development economics IA because I know for the IB you need to do a couple of IAs and one of them um, may have to be the development chapter. Okay? I think it's a very easy chapter that you can really get a level 7 in. Okay, And I know uh, for most IB students, I used to be an IB student before and um, I got a 93% raw score in IB economics and uh, during the my years as an IB student, I really disliked doing the um, economics IA. The reason is because my teacher never gave me any concrete um, strategy on how to do the IA. Um, he just gave very vague instructions and therefore I wasted a lot of time uh, writing an IA that really didn't re meet the IB requirements. Okay, And actually the IA pulled my grade down slightly, but luckily I did extremely well in the exam. But now, actually after graduating and um, having met so many students, I really know I, I have developed a system that will allow you to write a level 7 I using just two hours, okay? And I've actually done that for microeconomics and macroeconomics. I've uploaded some uh, IA tutorial videos onto, um, onto YouTube, okay? Um, which basically um, received hundreds, tens of thousands of views, okay? If you go on YouTube, let me show you. Show you okay. Let's say if you go on YouTube and search Econ IA, okay. Search Econ IA. The first three, the first three results are my videos. Okay, three thousand views for the macro one, ten thousand for micro, four thousand for international. Okay, so I'm hoping that um, this development video will have the same type of impact and bring as much value as the previous videos to our uh, beloved IB students, okay? So, let's start off with how to write a level 7 development IA. So first of all, the first thing is finding the right article. I always recommend people to, when you find an article, uh, go to this website, news.google.com, okay? News.google.com, okay? So, um, and then, because of development, there are multiple chap multiple topics you could do. Uh, the easiest topic is definitely uh, FDI, okay? So search for foreign direct investment, okay? And find a suitable article. So I would suggest you to listen to this video first and listen to what I want you to put in your IA. Listen to the arguments, the common arguments about foreign direct investment, and then you could basically look for the article that fits those arguments. Okay, so I'll give you the arguments and you find an article that fits those arguments. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll give you a very basic structure first. Okay, so when you start off, you should say this, the first sentence is always a summary. Okay, so in the summary, you say something like this. This article dated a certain date um, is about foreign direct investment, FDI, into da, 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 a certain country, okay? Okay. So, what does the FDI do, okay? Well, you need to define FDI first, okay? So give a definition of FDI. So FDI is defined as the case when A firm in one country, okay, invests in a firm in another country, okay, and gains direct control. Okay, this is the definition of FDI. Okay, when a firm in a country invests in a firm in another country and gains direct control. All right. So, next thing. So the first paragraph is really the introductory paragraph. Okay. Um, so you just give the date of the article, talk about that, just about FDI into a country, and then define FDI. The second and third paragraph is about the, um, you need to use diagrams to explain what is going on. So almost in all articles about FDI, I think one common trait about FDI is that it increases economic growth, okay? 
FDI generates economic growth. So you can use a diagram to show how FDI generates economic growth. Okay, so you can start off with FDI can, in the second paragraph, just say FDI can generate economic growth. Okay, like shown in the diagram below. Okay, so what diagram can we do to show that FDI generates economic growth? I recommend you to draw the PPC. And the PPC, it's very important for you to label the axis correctly. Some students, they just put good A and good B. That is not, that, that is not good enough. Okay, so you should have consumer goods and capital goods. This is the best way, okay? You draw the PPC shipping out. So what does FDI do? So first of all, FDI increases investments in a country, right? So firms, what does investment? So you can say investments refer to spending on capital goods, right? So when foreign firms invest in um, invest in the in a country they will spend on capital goods okay so hence there will be an increased quantity of capital goods okay higher quantity of capital goods so you can say capital is one of the factor of production okay so hence the potential output is going to rise okay hence generating economic growth so that's shown in this diagram third paragraph another diagram you could draw is about negative externalities because FDI often generates negative externalities so you want to find an article where it talks about how FDI uh, creates pollution which damages health that sort of thing and then you draw the market failure diagram to show that okay so for example, so I don't know what your FDI is about, but you can find an article. Most, a lot of the FDI, a common problem is least an environmental problem. So you can draw that. You can draw the market failure diagram to show negative externalities of production. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So when you label diagram, you draw two supply curves. MSC is above. MSC higher than MPC because the cost to society is greater than the cost to the individual. And as I always say, um, um, if you want, if the externality is caused by production, you always draw a um, two supply curves. Okay, so the cost to society is greater than the cost to the individual. Okay, so what do we say here? So first of all, you can say, um, just say something like this according to the article FDI led to da, da, da. and then you talk about all the negative consequences that the FDI has led to right so for example damaging health that sort of thing so you can say <coughs> there are okay there are uh, negative externalities of production right so how is this reflected on the diagram so it's it's reflected by the fact that MSC greater than MPC so you can say hence because of the negative externality of production MSC exceeds MPC okay so two points you need to talk about this point and this point right so P opt Q opt is social optimal point right is a social optimal point, okay, which is where, where does it occur? Which is where MSC equals MSB, okay, MSC equals MSB, P opt, Q opt, okay. How about, um, the second point is this point, okay, the free, P and Q is the free, is the, is the market equilibrium. Okay, it's the market equilibrium where MPC 
equals MPB. <coughs> okay, so hence, what can we say? There's overproduction, right? Because the free market equilibrium is greater than so shops So you can say there's overproduction of the good. So hence, this is a case of market failure. And you can say there's welfare loss. Why is there a welfare loss? Well, because it's being because this good is being overproduced, and for these overproduced quantity, the MSC exceeds the MSB, right? So because MSC exceeds MSB between Q opt to Q, okay? That's it. <clears throat> so you have two diagrams, okay? So the next paragraph, paragraph three and paragraph four, is is the evaluation paragraph, okay? So you talk about advantage, one paragraph about this advantage and disadvantage, okay? And you always want to focus it back on the living standard. So any point you focus on the living standard. Advantage, we already talked about economic growth, right? So how can economic growth generate living standards? Well, improve living standards. Well, economic growth is going to increase income, right? So increased income increases access to goods and services, which basically increases the uh, standard of living, right? And then another thing you could really talk about is, um, as I said just now, negative externalities of production. So why is that bad, ne negative externality of production? So you can say, for example, that it depends on the paragraph, but it damages health, right? Which directly decreases standard of living. What are some other common things about, about FDI? Some common arguments, okay. So common arguments about FDI, another one is employment opportunities. It creates employment opportunities for locals, okay. So creating opportunities, one way you can talk, you can explain how this improves standard of living is that it increases income and allows poor to break out of the poverty cycle. I'm sure you've learned about the poverty cycle, right? So if you don't remember, poverty cycle is low income, low investment in health and education. So these poor households, they don't invest much in health and education, which leads to low productivity not so productive, leading back to low income, okay? So if you increase, if you give them a job, they can raise their income and help them to break out the poverty cycle, okay? Another one is tax revenue. Another common advantage is tax revenue, okay? So tax revenue, you can say, allows the government to increase spending on merit goods. Like goods with positive externalities. What are some examples, such as health and education, right? So they can, this can help to improve the health and the education standard in, in the country, okay? And then now let's move on to the disadvantage. Negative externalities production, that's a big one. Another one is you can say profits are often repatriated. So what does it mean by repatriated? Repatriated basically means sent abroad. Profits are sent abroad, okay? So when the MNC makes profit, they just send it back to their home country. So if they are repatriated, it does not benefit the um, locals, right? So it does not, it may not increase the income of the locals significantly, okay? So another one is that it's vulnerable to external shocks, okay? Vulnerable to external shock, like basically, you can say if there's a change in the out in the economy, global economy, there can be an outflow of FDI. Okay, could be an outflow. So people like firms may take their money out of the country if there is if there are external shocks. For example, if they if there's a recession in foreign countries. Okay, and then there could be an outflow of FDI. So then. When there's an outflow, that there, that this will increase the unemployment. Okay, if the FDI goes out away. One thing I want to note is that when you use these advantage and disadvantage, don't just copy what I wrote here. You need to analyze your article and look for 
uh, supporting arguments from the article to back up these points. But I'm pretty sure you will see these arguments. It's just a matter of finding those uh, evidence from your article and to back up these points. Or even you may even come up with new arguments. Okay. So lastly, conclusion. So conclusion, I think the most very common conclusion about FDI is this. So you can say there are short-term gains, right, from FDI. Okay, so this is a good thing. So which includes growth, tax revenue, and employment opportunities. However, you can say it may not be a uh, sustainable way of development. So why? Why is it not sustainable? Well, a few things, because it damages the environment. And also, another thing is that it's vulnerable to external shock, so it may not be continuous. Okay. So hence, what is the conclusion? I would say it's countries should not rely on them solely on FDI to achieve growth okay so it can, it can help growth and development but it should not the country should not only rely on that okay if you watched all the way until this part of the video I, I, I can sense that you are very uh, concerned about your academics you're a really hard-working person uh, well actually HX uh, we're leading uh, we're the only uh, education company in Hong Kong that teaches the Ivy diploma Okay, if you find this video useful, I highly recommend, and you want to boost your grade um, to at least a level 6 or even a level 7, you can register a free trial at our HKXL Education. So you can just go on uh, your web browser and search hkxl.com, and then you can register a free trial session to see how we can help you. Okay, and if, you not, if you're not prepared for a lesson yet, you can also go to our website and sign up, subscribe to our HKXL blog. We have a blog running um, every week. Um, and you will receive regular updates and we'll give you a lot of IB tips, okay? So because I've used, I used to be an IB student before, I got 40 out of 45 in the IB diploma. So I'll give you a lot of tips that can, hope, I think everyone can achieve the same level as I did as if you just put in some hard work and have the right strategy, okay? So I hope that's, this video helped you. See you next time.